it looks like he's got something uh, going on with his skin. I am gonna keep a look at it, but I think he was having a little bit of a scrap. Hey, this is why I'm here, guys. I gotta deal with problems as they arise. I have started out as a pet lover, and I still think pets are important, and I don't think taking away the ability for people to um, have pets is a good thing. I think that's actually a bad thing. I want people to have pets, and I want them to do it correctly. But uh, blindly going out there on the internet and lobbing accusations, when in fact people do things within the letter of law, that is just not what we need right now. We need all to work together. Oh man, every time I see him now, I feel like I've got I've got like a second chance. I love this animal so much, you guys know that. Hey, what's going on everyone? I am up and at him this morning. It's uh, very cool, <laughs> actually cold, or it was cold earlier, it went down 41 degrees last night. Uh, we gotta bring out some animals. We're gonna start with the sulcatas here. It's been just the most bizarre winter Florida's had in a long time. It's been cold at night, but during the day it's in the 70s. So it's really strange what's happening here. Hey guys, come on out, there's Hercules. We haven't seen him in a little while. And then all the other sulcatas are doing well. But um, you know, I just like to come out and check. Every morning, uh, super early, um, I come out and I open the doors uh, to let them out. <clears throat> now, last night around 3 a.m. I, I woke up and I had to come out and check everything. And it's just, it's been nuts. Like I said, so Florida's been cold uh, this winter. Um, Usually, our nights are in the 60s, but as I said, lately it's been getting down to the low 50s or even in the 40s, so it's just been a pain in the neck. So what will happen here is these guys are going to come out, and they like to lay right near the darker color of the wood uh, of the fence. And it radiates heat, which is fantastic. So these guys will warm up. It's going to go up to 75 degrees today. It'll get cool again tonight, but then... For the next week, it looks like we're gonna have normal winter temperatures here in Florida nights in the 60s, which is good. It's just extremely stressful. And I know I've done a few videos like this uh, all year uh, in the recent months, um, but man, this is just the reality of it. Um, so I gotta get out here, bring you guys along with me and show you what's happening. Now, we're gonna go over here to the radiated. I actually threw this little blanket over the top I kind of block them in every night. I got to move this rock. Oh, big old rock right there. Let's do that. Pull it off. But let's have a peek in at these guys. Um, tonight, I will again wind up putting them all in uh, to their little habitat. Now, the cool stuff is, is I've got this heater right now. There's a temperature probe down there and it's on a thermostat. And so if it drops below um, 70 degrees, this heater will turn on. And it, so far so good with these thermostats, they've been working. I'm really happy about that because in the past, I would just let these heaters burn all day and it's a terrible waste of resources and money. Um, so thankfully, uh, good old Tom, our, our partner here at Camp Kennan, my partner, and uh, Bob Hutchinson and a few other good friends sent me some thermostats it's been really good um how about these ecosystem ponds though one thing i will say um when it comes to the cooler temps these ponds just get even clearer than normal now they are very clear in the summer but in the winter they do wind up getting much much more uh clear and beautiful and that's just because we don't have the sun directly overhead um and so I find that they just look incredible. I haven't done anything to this pond. I just let it do its thing. But let's check right now. Sometimes if things get too cool, uh, we find our little turtles in there. And I definitely want to make sure that, you know, we don't have any issues as far as those guys um, getting too cold to where they drown. Now I do see an Orlidia in the bottom there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is an Orlidia down there. and. Um, when we get to the Orlidia, the babies that are in with the Japanese Reeves turtles, I'm going to show you just what's going on. But here, right there, is our pink belly side neck. You know what I'm going to do, guys? 
I'm going to go ahead and grab the other camera. I want to get some underwater shots of these guys and just see how they're doing. And I want to show you um, what happens or what you, ex you can expect um, when it gets cold with certain species. It is kind of interesting and I want you guys to see it. Um, so I have these Orlidia and they do very well. Let's, we got a banana, that's important. Gotta have a little energy. Ah, there we go. There's the other GoPro. So basically guys, the Orlidia and the Grandis that are in the big pond, if you guys have ever heard me talk about the giant Asian wood turtles um, and the Orlidia, the reason I have these turtles here, we got them from the Zoo Miami. The reason I took them is they're tough. They can handle cooler temperatures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go underwater and I'm gonna try and get as close as possible because this animal's real deep. But I wanna show you his eyes. They do somewhat chap a little bit. Their eyes will chap, but that's about as bad as they get. And so there he is just kind of hanging out down at the bottom of the pond and the water is definitely warmer, warmer down there. Uh, but you can see right by his eyes, just a little bit of chapping going on. Otherwise the turtle is fine. And you know, that will in fact go away. And oh, here's a, here we have Caliger borneensis doing well. Water temperature is in the 60s right now. So we were able to run our well last night. And I'm gonna turn it on again to help this pond warm up even more. We're looking at now uh, pink belly side neck, another, another um, tropical species that is doing well. And I gotta tell you, as long as the water turtles are inside the water, uh, they tend to be okay. So let me show you what I gotta do. I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna manually kick on the well water. We're gonna let it run for about two hours. We're gonna let it overflow and that'll warm this up even more. Now, it also comes on around midnight and that'll keep them, uh, it takes the edge off throughout the coldest part of the evening. The other turtles, they burrow down into the leaves um, and then the sun warms them up here during the day. Here we go, look at this. Up, oh, there's another Caliger right there. Hey guy. Oh, that's such nice warm water. Let me just put it in the water so that it'll warm up. So the reason I like to do this, I let it run for a long time. Now, I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this guy because this Caliger, seems to have some um it looks like he's got something uh, going on with his skin but upon inspection of that i thought it was going to be some kind of fungus brought on by the cold i am going to keep a look at but i think what it actually is is i think he was having a little bit of a scrap with some of the other turtles um so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on this turtle uh, it's very easy for me to care for it. I would just pull this turtle out and I'd give it baths in diluted iodine, betadine. Um, that will help cure some of it. And if that doesn't help, there's another product on the market called Acroflavin. And it is a medicinal treatment for freshwater fish. It cures fungal problems. So I can also do soaks that way. But I actually don't think that's fungal. I think he just got into a scrap with a couple other turtles. So I am gonna keep an eye on that Caliger, but this is what I have to do, guys. I've always gotta be very um, observant and always walking out here. The good thing is, is that this turtle uh, that we're talking about, this, I, I always say Caliger, but it's a Badiger borneensis. They changed the designation, the genus name. Uh, this animal's very active, even in the cooler temperatures, and is still eating well. So we'll just hope that uh, it is in fact some kind of um, just scarring from a little scrap because I'm not seeing it on some of the other side of the animal but uh, again hey this is why I'm here guys I gotta you know deal with problems as they arise and when you're when you're dealing with winter um, all kinds of you know situations can arise with these animals which kind of stinks it's why i dislike winter immensely um, i want to show you the vietnamese pond turtles they've been doing well you notice the sun right here but what we've got is these guys like to hide in this corner and as long as they get down deep and the sun shines on them 
they can take the temperatures for a short time. So here they are. They're just hiding right there in the sand. Vietnamese pond turtle. There's so many of these little guys. Some of them like to kind of crawl into the into the plants itself. So we've got the water running. We let the radiators out. Let's go see our galops. Now the galops door, um, I did not screw it shut. They're actually uh, already out. I came out here a little bit earlier and they did in fact come out and they're just waiting for the sun to just get a little bit higher over these mango trees you can see and it's gonna sun right it's gonna just kind of pelt right on them and so they're smart uh socrates is waiting next to the wall because it'll reflect some of that sunlight and heat there is my buddy nostradamus all right and then of course here is darwin and so you know i got a funny story i want to tell you guys <clears throat> um, about these tortoises, more, more specifically the Galapagos tortoises. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me post um, about maybe three weeks ago, a picture of the Galapagos tortoises. And what happened was some people from Ecuador um, saw that and basically were <clears throat> wondering how is it that I have a you know, CITES one uh, animal that you're not supposed to have. And uh, they were really concerned that I was actually poaching <laughs> the uh, tortoises. So uh, I had to explain to them that, um, you know, these animals were in fact legally acquired and it is illegal to own Galapagos tortoises in the United States if you have them uh, captive raised. Now, many, many years ago, tortoises from the Galapagos were imported into the United States. I'm talking back in the 20s, uh, right around then for the San Diego Zoo. Uh, most of the tortoises, Galapagos tortoises in captivity here in the United States are from that group of animals that came back well, about a hundred years ago now. So there have been uh, many opportunities for um, private people to get them. They've bred them. As long as you're getting the animal from a captive bred situation, it is okay to own them. Now, I cannot buy or sell Galapagos tortoises from another state uh, in the United States. So for example, if someone lived in Georgia and wanted to buy a Galapagos tortoise from Florida, both the seller and the purchaser need a captive bred wildlife permit to make it a legal transaction. So um, I do not uh, I do not buy or sell Galapagos tortoises. Um, the last one I did buy was this one back in 2005. But it was really crazy on my Instagram because people were freaking out from Ecuador. Uh, so it got a little intense and I finally uh, did respond and explain to them the situation here in the United States. Uh, they apparently had a, um, a bunch of animals that were actually poached from the Galapagos Island, one of the breeding centers there. So it's very sad, but they poached babies. Obviously, none of these are babies, uh, certainly not Darwin. Um, so I don't know why they thought that I was the poacher, but um, in fact, I do everything I can to tell people that it is important to not take from the wild, certainly not turtles and tortoises, as they are uh, extremely threatened in most of their habitat anyway. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to just tell you guys that story. It kind of got crazy there on the old Instagram, but I, of course, uh, don't do anything illegal um, here. You know, I like to keep things above board and teach people the proper way to have these animals. There was also some discussion uh, that, you know, they were telling me these animals don't make good pets. And um, I actually wanted to clarify my stance because it's important to me and, um, I believe that if you have the space and you do things legally and you're not taking from the wild, we leave wild animals wild, um, you get a captive raised animal. If you have the space, this is a fantastic animal. Um, you know, I, I am not a, I have started out as a pet lover and I still think pets are important and I don't think taking away the ability for people to um, have pets is a good thing. I think that's actually a bad thing. 
I want people to have pets and I want them to do it correctly. I want them to give these animals the best possible life that they can give. And if you have the means and you have the space and you have a Galapagos tortoise and it is being treated properly and fed the right diet, um, I don't think that's a bad thing. What I think is bad is telling people that they can no longer keep animals uh, because it'll separate our young people from the natural world. Um, again, I want responsibility. We in the 21st century have learned so much about reptiles, about the animals we keep. It's very important that we uh, continue to educate and do things the right way. That's what my channel's about. I am not perfect, but I do stress doing things the right way. And you guys have watched this channel for a while. You've seen these tortoises here for a long time now. Um, I just hope that you guys are getting um, some good information. Uh, I understand the concern that the folks from Ecuador have. They have a, ver they have a lot of passion for their natural resources, for their animals, and I c uh, commend them for protecting them. But uh, blindly going out there on the internet and lobbing accusations um, when in fact uh, people do things within the letter of the law is not the way to draw people to your cause. Um, that is just not what we need right now. We need all to work together. Conservationists, private keepers like myself who do conservation work, and even young people out there starting out. I want you guys to be able to grow and have animals and learn, but we need to do it the right way. I think as a society, we have gotten smarter when it comes to these animals. Okay, so there, I, I just had to rant a little bit. Hope you guys uh, get something from it. But anyhow, anyhow, anywho, any wow, we're gonna go ahead and open up the cherry heads. There they are in there. Okay, um, moving along, let's get our rhino iguanas out. Everybody's gonna be out today. I'm very excited as it's been real chilly. There they are, hey guys guys oh there their heaters on they're feeling good oh that feels nice doesn't it everybody's just good and happy so i'm going to open this because it's very important for these guys to get on out today and to make sure that they get some nice sunlight right there's petra my spew look at these multi-horned rhino guanas how gorgeous and look at petra look at petra's beautiful horns and look at hers she's just a queen huh with those beautiful look at that crown she's got one two three four five six seven eight horns on her little face right there just incredible and uh we've got the one prominent one here on petro and then the two framing it and then one little guy there so four horns for him very beautiful animals we've got some babies oh we got some little baby rhinos uh three of them left um people have just been really excited about the rhinoceros iguanas and how about this girl there's my lady there she is where do you think what do you think she's doing huh she is soaking up that sun so awesome what a good girl and I can't wait to get her into a new enclosure with uh, good old Slinky. So Pinky and Slinky are going to have a huge enclosure. Um, more work to be done on that uh, tomorrow with my buddy, uh, my good old pal, Jerry Wolf, who also has a beautiful pair of black throat monitors uh, and lives just out down the block. So he's been helping me out. Okay, inside here. I was talking to you about, I'm running this water by the way, here uh, is a baby Orlydia, and you can't really see just a little bit around his eyes, a little chapped. Okay, so that's what will happen sometimes to these guys, and what do I like to do when I put turtles back in? I like to put them on land so they take a little breath, and then it can walk in on its own. But uh, they do, then they have torn up, look at that, they tore out this plant, let's see if I can kind of stick it back in somehow you know what might help if i put maybe a flat rock over it that will help these uh or lydia they tear up aquatic vegetation in fact many turtles do it's just how they kind of move around they eat it they bite it you hear that and we're just dripping out right now so maybe i'll just take what's this oh look that's more vegetation that's root but i'm just going to go ahead and pin this down with a flat rock I just like keeping a little vegetation in there. Helps the water quality. Okay. Let's let out slinks. 
I always get nervous. So you guys can imagine after uh, last month, last December 2020, just the drama with Slinky was um, terrible. So last night I came out to make sure heaters were on. Hey, buddy. There he is, handsome guy. Come on out, Slinky. Come out. People want to say what's up to you, man. They need to see you, Slinky. Come show them you and all of your glory and how we're keeping track of you and making sure we don't have any more drama with the cold weather. And last night, like I said, it got really, really cold. And I came out and I checked them because I do not want anything to happen to these animals. Um, I, oh man, every time I see them now, I feel like I've got, I've got like a second chance. I love this animal so much. You guys know that. There he is, my beautiful boy. I love him so much. And I've also got some exciting news. Kevin McCurley called me yesterday. I think we're gonna be getting a black dragon sooner rather than later. Stay tuned, guys. So, just an awesome critter right there. My slinky boy, what a beaut. So he's gonna come out, sun's right here. It's gonna warm up uh, his body. He's nice and dark right now. Uh, this is normal, how he wakes up. He's just a little bit slow, but um, man, he'll probably get a feed today. We're gonna get some nice temperatures this week. And we should probably, oh, look at that. I moved my hand and he really did, uh, he really did respond to that, didn't he? So Slinky's coming out, just a beautiful animal. But he knows, he knows who's got a hand. He's not gonna bite me. Okay, he's just tasting my hand. Oh, look at that, guys. He's looking, there's a reflection. There is a reflection from the camera on the ground. As I move the camera, it's kind of like a laser pointer and a cat. Slinky is, atta um, is attracted to that. So let's not freak him out. That was cool. How awesome. So there's Slinks. Should we go get Lola and Guapo out? Everyone's gonna get fed today because we're gonna get to be about 75 degrees. The Chinese box turtles, you may have not seen them in a while. Look, here's what they do when it's cold. These guys can take it. They just hunker down and uh, they're okay. And when the temperatures rise, they rise as well. So certain animals uh, can take it. Other animals, we have to take some precautions. Oh, there they are. There they are. Come on out, guys. It's time. Time to get on up and at them. Okay. I got to fix that mess of wires, too. They can hold it down. No snakes in here. They're all inside the warehouse. Um, just don't want to pull them in and out every night so the snakes are in vision cages for yeah probably until march but it's okay we're also um you know we got the other animals inside the warehouse as well their uh cages are on uh, go ahead look at this a little cold and all brown and all isn't it amazing that these little lizards can take such such cold temperatures and they're from a tropical area isn't that amazing originally from cuba but these guys have spread. The brown and all has spread throughout most of Peninsular Florida. But hey, look at you. What's up? Good looking. She came out. So everyone's feeling good. They're happy to get out. Let's go ahead next. And we're going to go into the warehouse here. And I got to open some doors for the leopard tortoises and for the redfoots. Um, this is uh, good stuff, man. Here we go. Oh, we got the water running. You know, the other funny thing is this whole thing is insulated, as you guys can see. And just walking in, it feels warmer. I've got these heat lamps going on timers. They stay on actually during the evening and it keeps everything nice and warm, right? But it also gets warm because we've got water running through here. So I have the leprechauns in here. All right, and we're just waiting to get that permit so we could get our friend Buttercup back. But um, we've got the leprechauns. We've also got the South African leopard tortoises in the corner. But that's not all. We still have my buddies. Look at this. Where is she hiding? Where is she hiding? That is a pretty interesting little spot she figured out to get into. Look at this. Can you guys see her? I can't. There she is. Oh, there's her head. I got to be careful. There is 
right there, I'm gonna go ahead, here's what I'm gonna do for you folks. I'm gonna put a light on so we can see our other female croc monitor that I'm holding on for a buddy of mine. There she is, do you guys see her? So she's found a place to hide. She's just doing good, she's eating. She's still very shy. And there is a little scarring on her nose, but that was from uh, her transport. So there she is right there. So we'll let her feel secure. I just like bringing you guys on a little tour with me to show you, you know, what's been going on here. So we've got the heat lamps, UV, she lays there. It gets nice and warm because that's dark wood. All right, do you think these uh, red foots are wanting to go out? They're all kind of hanging out by the door. So let's go ahead and go. Ugh. Get all these latched up. Get them out into the nice warm sun. I love my red foots. And these guys are tough. They can take, they can take cooler. I wouldn't say cold. I wouldn't leave them out in the 40s. But they do. There's Lego. Hi, Lego. You're going to have to start over again, pal. All right, we'll let them out. Let's get that one out. And we are out. Here we go. Oh, boy. So I've been running water in the large ponds. So you can see this basin is filled up. It overflows and kind of flows out the back here. A little bit messy, but necessary because of what we're dealing with as far as water and weather and all that good stuff. But it trickles into the pond back here. Plus we've got well water going into this pond where the fly rivers and the um, Badiger uh, affinis are. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna open this up a little. I wanna drain it a little bit faster. And I want that water to get into the pond faster. Here it is, here it comes, here it comes. Okay, you gotta like getting dirty, which I do, luckily for me. Doesn't bother me at all. All right, a little bit of a mess, but um, hey man, still good stuff. Oh, look at that beautiful little egret, fishing for it, just doing its thing. Oh, don't leave egret, you can stay, I love it. So this water is staying warm. Uh, just a few weeks ago, you guys remember, I went in and I checked on our, um, I checked on our good old, what are they called? Fly River Turtles. And uh, they're doing good, so I'm happy about that. They tend to burrow into the mud. It stays warmer in there. And really, it's just about a few degrees. It is, it's just about keeping them uh, on that, uh, right on a comfortable threshold. They don't want to get too cold, but they're able to take some of these temps. But we don't like to stress their bodies too much. That's the whole key. It's about taking the edge off, uh, not about overstressing the animals. Oh, look at that beauty right there. There's my Lagatha. Now, the unfortunate news is, is ever since I had to put my, um, put my hands on Lagatha, she is no longer a good friend of mine. And um, she and I have to build our trust up again. Uh, it is what it is, friends. It's just a necessary evil. I would rather have put hands on her to get her into her box um, than have her die. And the other thing, guys, is that now that I did that, she goes in. She's figured out, okay, the box is where I need to be in the evenings. And uh, that's that. So there's good old laggy. Easy does it, sweetie. All right, next, we're going to move along. Let their day begin without too much drama. Um, all right, we have one, one more animals to kind of, one more cage rather, just to check on. And that is the Lewis eye iguanas, the blue iguanas, the cyclura. So we're going to walk back over here. Here's the cage. Uh, tomorrow, more work getting done on it. We got, uh, we had a really nice, um, uh, we had some help from our Patreon supporters uh, for some uh, materials, which is much appreciated. Uh, if you guys like what I do here, if you guys enjoy or are getting any value out of uh, the content that Tom and I are producing and putting out there into the YouTube world, um, head on over to patreon.com slash camp cannon. It would be, uh, if you want to do more and help more, become a patron supporter. More content uh, and uh, live videos where you can chat with me. Um, so just throwing it out there. If you guys love, would like to, go check that out patreon.com slash camp cannon i'm now going to take this this is kind of ugly 
but it works. So this, this hideout, okay, this rock hide is actually a plastic um, corrugated drainage pipe that is cut in half. And I'll just pull this off. Uh, and in there are the blue ones. And as you can see, they're alive <laughs> and they're bopping their heads. Very cool. So you can kind of see it's plastic, but around the plastic is a lot of foam. You can see some foam there in the back. Um, so this is fairly insulated, plus it's got a heating pad just underneath the surface. So uh, yeah, these guys are good. So let's pull this dirty towel out. Um, basically all that towel does is provide a buffer over the door or over the entrance rather to the cave. Um, again, here's the well water going. You can kind of see it down there. Uh, just a great situation, man. I'm glad and fortunate we got this. Uh, Rec Pond is doing amazing. I got in there, I cleaned out some of the algae that grew up. Uh, I mentioned it in other videos. These are the most amazing ecosystem ponds you can get when, if you have the opportunity to get an aquascape pond, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. Um, I'm a hobbyist, I just love it. Uh, so I'm always working on it. Right now, you notice the lilies are dying back because of the cold. I just haven't felt like going in and, and fertilizing. Uh, but that's about the only thing that's happened is the lilies have died back because these are tropical lilies. Um, but once temperatures get warm, I'm going to go down to uh, the aquatic nurseries um, and make sure that I have uh, or that I do get some more lilies to plant in there. And so by summer, everything will be in bloom. All right, so we did it. Oh, look at this. We're going to wind up where we began. You guys got to spend uh, the whole tour with me or my whole ritual why i have the animals i have um how we do it every morning and we're going to finish off right here and as you can see they already knocked down their door which is okay for coming out but bad for coming back in but you see where they're laying here are the sulcatas doing what they're going to do probably for the next hour they're just going to soak up the sun and then they're going to get to business of being tortoises but uh of course they move this and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put it back up, just like this. There you go, come on out, young lady. And I'll, I'll go ahead, I think I got a lot to do today, people. We're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that everything's secure and happy for the So, all right, there you go, kids. I said, there you go, Kenan, weirdo. Uh, you guys have a great day, wherever you may be. Um, we are gonna continue to provide you guys with educational, fun videos about my well, about my little reptile sanctuary. Some other cool things coming up. So hang tight. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, we really appreciate it. And so do the animals. I love sharing them with you. And I hope you guys learned something. Uh, all right. I will see you again real soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. Bye-bye.